Hello, this is Brian. Well, we're well on our way down. Uh, we're back most of the way down. Uh, Walker Pass is just around the bend and down the hill a bit. So we've made quite a bit of progress. And since this is the warmer part of the day, I've been seeing countless side blotch and it looks like sagebrush lizards running all across the path here today. I know I took out a few pictures of some of them, uh, but yeah, apparently I think a sagebrush lizard, and there's definitely side blotch lizard, and that other lizard I think is a collared lizard, but I'm not 100%. Like I said on that, was it my second clip? I have to do a little research on that, but so we're coming down from peaks. We're coming down. We're on the Pacific Crest Trail. We're coming up on our last stretch of the day. These uh, puffy cumulus clouds are starting to develop. Because I know over by the Sierra Crest, further up, it looked like it was stormy over there. It might have been some rain or thunderstorms over that way. So, it's a good thing we're getting, getting ourselves back at a reasonably good pace. Uh, I don't see any threatening clouds overhead yet, but it's definitely producing some shade, which is nice. But, yeah, it's been an interesting, relatively short hike. A couple, put in a few miles, I would say. A lot of it was cross country. So basically, once you get up past the, the last switchback, if you want to do peak 6529 and or peak 6366, you follow this trail uphill from Walker Pass, you follow it to the top of the switchback, so it's, a, it's when you get a little small area of zigzagging switchbacks. When you're at the last one, you're gonna, what we did is we walked a little bit more, just a little bit more along where the trail straightened out, and then we saw a slope we just decided to walk up to, kind of like a to, to kind of like a, a ridge line. So we joined the ridge line. Then I turned right at the ridge line to hit up to 65.29. That was the first peak I hit. By far out of the two of them, by far the hardest of the two. And then I uh, kind of scrambled and tumbled along the ridge went over a, a false little peaklet, which is maybe about 50, 50 or so feet lower, then down to another saddle, and then I climbed up the uh, 63, 66, and I just retraced my steps to the notch where we first climbed up after leaving the PCT, got back onto the PCT, uh, down climbing that slope, and here we are, making our way back probably about a half mile to go so this will be my last clip of the day really a pretty good day today but he made it along with me you're welcome man I'm glad uh, glad we had a good time we saw lots of different lizards it was just a really really good experience up here today but I am tired, my back's a little stiff from let, carrying this backpack all day. So, we're going to be driving all the way to uh, Frazier Park. Yeah, I saw that right, 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 right when I stepped down, then I saw it flying up. I just saw this orange colored butterfly flying. You did? Yeah, I used to have a few of them that reached to a butterfly where they broke out of the cocoon. And there's a side blotch lizard right there. Oh, hell yeah, heck yeah. Hopefully the camera got it for a, at least a second. That was a side blotch lizard, but I also saw what I, could, what I believe are uh, southern, I think southern sagebrush lizard. I think it's the southern one. I think it's Scalopores graciosus vandenbergianus, but a little, little extra research will be... Uh, do to make sure I have the right subspecies, but they tend to have more, a little more striping on their back than side blotch lizards, a lot more noticeable. They kind of look similar to female side blotch lizards, little, like little uh, triangle shaped spots going down their backs. They kind of look like female side blotch lizards a little bit. 
but there's a little different, little, little different color to them, and the white stripes are much more noticeable. I, I can tell. So I'm pretty sure I was looking at some sagebrush lizards as well. Uh, I don't know if I got any video of those. No, there's not as much sagebrush down here. Yeah, that's right. I didn't even think about that till now. Uh, now you'll find it down there uh, over by Walker Pass. For some reason, this area, they just don't really feel like it. There's a baby yucca brevifolia. Joshua tree yucca. Just a little baby guy. So, some young upstarts, exactly. Exactly. Upstart. Yeah, it's. Love to get this in the flow plants. That's a type of a buckwheat. It's an annual. I think it's an annual herb. It's a type of a buckwheat that gets these weird, wiry inflorescences that are vertical, and they kind of look like little miniature leafless trees when they dry up, and they're annuals. I forget what species it is. But um, those ones we're talking about, these are what the old inflorescences look like. Kind of like wiry, like little bushes. But yeah, it's a type of an annual buckwheat. That's awesome. Yeah, I gotta get those pots in the sun. I love that those little coming in up in my pot for the plants. Yeah, well, those are the ones that you'd have to regrow every year because oh, they're I annuals. Awesome. So as long as they produce enough seed to, so you'll have a little seal so a seed soil soil seed bank for yourself. What grow that's and then you can just rely on it to grow by itself. Uh, no, my buckwheat was my buck. The buckwheat I used to have was yeah. a perennial, a shrub, yeah. And it's it's it it, it passed away this uh, this, yeah. That's awesome. That one actually produced its own flowers and seeds for a couple times. It just eventually this passed to. Uh, Fall and early winter, it just uh, gave out finally. Yeah. I wonder what makes plants get so far and then decide to wet. Well, I know it was going through some distress during the course of the summer and fall. Yeah. Because I noticed uh, the soil got too dry too quickly. But, yeah. I mean, buckwheats are normally drought tolerant, but it's probably used to. Where I had it, it was used to yeah, getting. Boil the kinda, yeah. It was kind of under nursery conditions. So I think the, the lack of water and the fact that it has a pretty shallow root inside of a, a planter is going to probably rely on a little bit more uh, extra care. You might hear there's more access to more soil on it in the wider range, so it's probably... Yeah, and they're used to, the ones in the wild are used to growing like that. So now then when we cultivate them in cultivation, it might be to live them on the side. Yeah. Well, a friend and I are... Fender and I are going to be down at Walker Pass probably in about a half an hour or less. And uh, we thank you for joining us on our little interesting cross-country adventure up here in the southern tip of the Sierra Nevada, my first Sierra hike of 2022. Hopefully there will be more. Thanks for watching. We will see you on the next adventure.